Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome, Kage here and today I'm taking a look at a little game called Turn On by Brainy Studio. This is a game that was given to me to take a look at by the developers and uh, give it a whirl, see what I think and this is going to be my impressions to you. Now unfortunately when I did this I, I actually played the game, gave raw first impressions out there but I did this as a live stream on Twitch. And it's quite unfortunate that I did not realize that the audio mix was terrible. I'm, I'll put a link in the video description of this video for you to go to the Twitch so you can take a look at it. Which is, it's just a shame though because I felt like it, that was a great way that you, if you wanted to see what my raw first impressions of this game were. And also I was giving out, you know, a few little things that I felt about that I could directly to the developers if they were to watch it. So it really kind of... Um, upsets me a bit that you probably won't be able to make any of that out. So here we go. This is gonna, I'm going to give you my impressions of this from what I've played. Uh, caveat here, of course, this is not a full review. This is a first impressions. I've gotten about... If I were to base my progress on the achievements, I've gotten about halfway through the game. There are a lot of achievements. I believe like 80, and I've got like 40 of them or something like that. Uh, they're not super hard to get, uh, but they do reward you for doing little things. So first and foremost, what is Turn On? Well, it's something of a platform puzzler, although the puzzles are kind of light. Really, it's kind of a platformer where you are a little orb of electricity, and you're going out to try and turn back on the electricity from some kind of event and bring everything back to light, as it were. So pretty cool. Uh, go over some things here first. Uh, we have... Uh, Settings, which are very light. There are a lot of language options. This is from a Russian development studio, and uh, I might mention that this game did win the Imagine Award in 2014, I believe, uh, in Russia. And they're no strangers to that, because they actually released a previous game called Witchcraft, which got second place in that same event. So going through this, we've got VSync, SSIO, FXA. and I mean, not a lot here. A lot of the options for this game are actually changed in a launcher. So what you're not seeing here is the ability to rebind buttons on your keyboard or controller. Now this game does use a lot of controller prompts, even if you're just using a keyboard. So it's really, it's fairly intuitive to deal with that. They're not awkward button placement. In fact, this game is very light as far as control is concerned. It's really only four things you do, left, right, up, and down. But the key bindings, it would be nice to have them here in case I wanted to change them to something else. Uh, and also, the launcher's version of the key binding is not entirely clear. There's actually well, there's tons of keys listed there. It feels like maybe what it was is the launcher was made... Uh, I, I can imagine it feels like a Unity, so I'm guessing this was Unity. Uh, and so there's a lot of buttons there that really don't make sense for this game, and they were just never programmed out of the launcher. So that's kind of unfortunate. It can make it difficult at times. Uh, but again, most of it as a default isn't too bad, but it would be nice to see some of those kind of changed and fixed around. So that would be one thing, uh, one little piece of advice I would give. It's not make or break, but it is kind of useful, especially if you plan on making anything that's going to be a bit more complex. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go in and show you one of the early stages uh, this game takes place in two different types of stages. So this is the stage select. You kind of go around the city. Uh, you have to cycle through all the stages one at a time, which can be slightly annoying because there's actually a lot of them. And at this point, I mentioned I'm about halfway through the game, and I've played about, I think it was maybe an hour and a half. So this may be something of a three to five hour affair based on your level progression, how quickly you go. Like what I've been doing when I played this I went through each of the stages and tried to complete them 100% if I could. So I spent a lot of time looking for every little area. There are some stages you can just coast right into the end. So I'll go first, show you this is the basic gameplay type here in this stage. You're this little guy, little orb of energy. Now in the very beginning you can't jump, but within the first stage you learn that. So you have two abilities. You can move along a wire, you can jump, and you can fall down in order to get to another piece of wire. As you can see here, it's fairly straightforward. What makes this game interesting, though, is what it does when it comes to perspective. 
Now you might see here, I just took a jump here and it looks like I'm jumping from platform to platform, which I am, but you'll also notice there's a slight shift in the perspective, uh, perspective here. I'm actually in the background now, and then I jump, and now I'm slightly in the foreground. Now this stage, and honestly most of the stages up until the one hour mark, for me, don't feel like they play with the perspective too much. Like here, I'm on the background, and then I'm back in the foreground. And it's really cool, I like it. But I would have to say what bothers me about this is that it doesn't feel like I'm in the background, right? So the character's sprite or model or whatever you want to call it doesn't really get bigger or smaller. It stays the same size. So when I'm jumping from foreground to background, it can sometimes be hard to tell that's what's really happened. And really the way to, to change that is usually with little tricks of the camera, right? The camera zooming in and out, and that would kind of give you the idea of, okay, yeah, now you're in the foreground, you're in the background. Uh, but it feels like, at least in the early stages, that it doesn't really quite do that. And then I'll show you a stage that does. So that's just one stage. I didn't go through everything I could have done. Uh, it scores you, and unfortunately we've got these big, what looks like mobile buttons, which means it might be have, might have been designed with mobile in mind as well. But I can move on to the next stage, or I can go back to the city, or I could replay. So that's the first basic type of stage, is the platformer. And you'll notice there was a little bit of puzzling there. There was a truck that was blocking the view of the power line, so I couldn't just go to the next power line, and I had to activate uh, one of those uh, electrical panels to make it move. If I go up, this is the second type of stage that this game has, and this is what you might call a runner. There are little story events, too. Uh, as you can see, they're kind of cute. There's no really spoken dialogue. Everything's kind of done in gibberish. Which kind of makes it cute and kind of helps with localization. Ryan again mentioning that it looks like it was done by uh, a Russian studio. And I think that messed up because of my recording software. I'm going to be honest. Don't, don't judge it by that. I have noticed there have been some little inconsistencies since I started up DX Story. Uh, including the uh, the studio's logo didn't show up. So there might be some graphical issues only because of my recording software, and if I notice it, I will try and point it out. So this, well, this is one of the first ones. I should probably go to one of the later ones. But this is the runner stage. As you can see, there are only certain lines that are active, and you'll have red and green uh, little markers to pick up. Now, these markers are normally just for score, but the red and green ones will vary particularly... Uh, either heal you or hurt you. So I'll go ahead and hit that. You'll see I've got in the upper left three chances. There are three little green electric bars that if I lose them, I will die. So let's talk about death in this game. Let's talk about what is it like to fail in this game. To be honest, it feels like this game has a very limited or near non-existent failure state. When you're playing this game and you are playing at a normal level, and let me go maybe go to a, uh, a harder one. If you fall off the wires and you end up going somewhere you're not supposed to or you just fall into a foreground or something like that, you end up just respawning back at the beginning of the stage, but everything you've done is still done. So I'm going to do this. This is a runner stage. It's also kind of a boss stage. So it's actually kind of neat because you have to survive and then not only do you have to get through the runner portion, but you have to do something in order to beat the level, such as uh, you've got this tram that's rampaging. Yeah, that's that's definitely my recording software doing that. That's never happened before, so I apologize. So the idea is, after I get to a certain point, I've got to hit the two electrical boxes. I don't have a mouse pointer, but I'm going to have to hit those two electrical boxes. And this part of the game is actually kind of neat, because it actually showcases that it has a pretty interesting soundtrack, if you're into that kind of thing. I thought it was nice. Now, the only time I've run into an actual failure state with this is on this runner stage. Specifically, this runner stage, because uh, I n really didn't fail the other runners in, in, in this particular way. Normally, as you saw, I fall off, and then it's just going to start me over again. But, if I lose all three of the uh, lightning bolts from my HUD on the upper left, then I enter an actual death state. And what that means is, no matter how far I've been on this stage, right, like right now what you're seeing is, even though I'm starting the runner part of it over and over again, it will resume when I get to a point like I hit one of those boxes on top. 
But if I lose all of these, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this real fast. There we go. Losing all of those completely resets the stage, as you may see here. So normally when you die, you just kind of go back to the beginning of the stage. If it's on one of the normal stages, all the lightning bolts you've picked up are still there. All the lights you've turned on are still there. I'm completely missing my jump, so you're really probably not getting much out of this. <laughs> but yeah, everything is there. All the progress you've made is still there. So you don't have to relight sections of the city. You Wow. I'm bad at this, apparently. I'm out of practice. You don't have to relight sections of the city. You don't have to redo any work. You just kind of pick up where you left off now the downside is you will kind of if it's a large stage you will have to navigate your way back to wherever it was that you died so it could be a little frustrating in that regards but most of the stages are not super big that I found that to be a big problem and again I've only really been about halfway through uh, so really the failure state in the normal stages is well <coughs> I'm, I'm bad at that uh, let me pull out of this real fast so, the normal stage is not too bad, and I haven't really found them to be too big of a problem. The runners, this is the only, this is the major challenging runner portion I've had, and as you could see, it really doesn't go terribly fast. Uh, there have been, there was another runner stage, it wasn't a boss, that started to pick up in the middle and then slowed down again. I think it's this one, actually. Maybe we can take a look at this one. Yeah, it's this one. So this one moves at a decent clip. So what I would say, my impressions of this, as far as the platforming par portion and the runner portion, is that it does both of these types of gameplay reasonably well, but I feel like it doesn't really do either one of them exceptionally well. Like, I've play I don't play many runners, and the few I have are definitely, they will challenge you to uh, quite a bit of quick reflex thinking, and this one... It feels like this is kind of more of a casual affair, and it's kind of more of a lighthearted affair, as you could probably tell by a lot of the animation happening in the background as I'm jumping from place to place. And upside down buildings. So I would say, my the way I feel about this is that this is probably not meant for more of a hardcore gamer, but it's meant to be more of a casual affair, and to be just to be fun, lighthearted. And so here we can see music picks up, it gets a little bit faster. And as such, I feel like it does a reasonably good job of that. And I had some fun with it. This is not necessarily my cup of tea, per se. Um, but as far as a game to experience, to play, and to just kind of enjoy what the beauty it is of a game, yeah, it's kind of neat. And I like the idea you're kind of going around bringing light back to the city. And uh, after this, what I'll do is I'll show you this, this stage that kind of made me realize what potential this game has and maybe the the kind of stage that will make me decide maybe I'll go back and play it again because I want to see what else they do with the game to make it interesting just kind of go through a bit of this runner stage kind of show you a bit more of it uh, so overall yeah I, I have enjoyed the game I think it's uh, it's a cute it's cute it is definitely very cute uh, you're if you're Again, if you're looking for a major challenge, this is definitely not the one for you. Uh, but by no means is it bad. And if you suck at timing sometimes, like I do, you will fall off a bit. Oh, that was relatively short. So let me go and show you the stage that impressed me. And the stage that definitely gave me the impression that I like what they're going with this. I love their vision. But um, I feel like maybe they have... Uh, um, some technical things they have to deal with in order to fully express it and show it off. I just kind of wish my uh, recording software wouldn't be causing some of the issues that you're seeing with the uh, cinematics. Like, this is all looking normal, but when the cinematic ends, it does, it's not supposed to just suddenly black out all of a sudden with the uh, prompt to hit the button. So this stage. This is the one that really impressed me. So, for one, it's not linear. Most of the other ones are linear. In this one, I can actually go left or right, and both sides have things for me to do. And one of the things I like, as you'll see as I go on, is just you hit certain areas, and you cause things like just the lights to light up. And then as buildings gain more electricity, as things happen in the world, you will see people kind of react. Dogs will get scared, or people will um, 
resume work. And this particular stage really highlights a lot of that. There's a lot going on. In fact, there's some parts of the stage you can't get to or can't do something with until you meet certain events, like this. I've lowered a platform, and that's going to allow me to move on to another part of the stage. Not necessarily me, though. Let me change that. It's going to allow someone else to move to a part of the stage, which will allow me to then help them further by doing something else that they need me to do that I can't do until they're there. Now, here's you're going to see some of the playing with the foreground and background. Now, I'm kind of way up high. I'm up here now. And I just jumped, and yeah, okay. And I'll just show you, cool, the, the failure. Ooh. I, that's, this is what I meant to eventually show you, but not so soon. So this shows the little bit of the foreground background play. You can see here now I'm in the foreground of everything going on. Back there is where I was earlier. And this stage really shows that off. The camera moves around in a way that really accentuates that, yes, now you're in the foreground, not the background. But you'll also notice you can zoom back in and out really quickly by falling. And essentially what you're doing, aside from dying, is you're falling from one platform to another, right? So in the game space, it's kind of a 2D affair of going back and forth. But thanks to tricks of the camera, you can realize, oh, I'm actually in the front, even though the game is kind of seeing maybe a 2D plane. Again, I, I kind of like that. I like that playing with perspective. But again, what bothers me here is like, here I've gone from this wire. Now this wire, based on perspective, is actually going into the background, but my character never changes size. And that is something that, when I was playing this the first time, and going through everything, is probably the one thing that bothered me the most. It was one of those things where I understand what's happening, I get it, but it felt cheap because of the effect not quite not quite getting the effect, not quite getting it the way I, I wanted to see that effect, you know? So there are different things here I will do in this stage that will allow me to move on to different parts of this stage. And this is the one, This it, it, it's really a shame to me that it took so long to get to this point, because if I would have picked up this game normally and just kind of played it normally, I'm not sure I would have really gotten to this part since it took me, again, maybe an hour, hour and a half. Um, to get to this point because I was like going through all the stages trying to find all the things that I'm like okay well let's let's try to find the stuff that's going to be interesting and it didn't quite happen right away so here what I'll just kind of show off the way these this the way these stages are put together because over here and again I jump to the background which is really cool but again the character kind of changes the same size and here the, the problem is not so much the trick of the camera is good the going back and forth but the camera doesn't really zoom in a lot so it's one of those things where it feels like i've barely moved from foreground to background even though that's supposed to be a pretty substantial distance in real world terms but of course i feel like they did that because i need to be able to see this to know i can jump that way all right i mean I can kind of understand that, but maybe make the character smaller in the background to represent, hey, you know, you really are in the background. I mean, here you can, this really here especially emphasizes it's a 2D plane because I'm going from a background area here into the foreground. And again, no real tricks of animation or sizing or anything to really emphasize that. Now I am, like I said, I, this is I'm kind of being a bit critical here, uh, but that's kind of what I do, right? I, I I wanted to start off with saying, of course, that I felt like it was kind of fun, kind of cute. You know, I have no problems with the game as a whole, absolutely not. It is, it, it was kind of fun to experience, and I've played other games, and they kind of mentioned this when they sent me this, it's like you know, play other games that I just enjoy looking at and playing, and one of those was kind of like Ori or Dust, and I just enjoyed the world itself to play in it. Um, so yeah, I do absolutely enjoy that, and it was kind of fun to do that. But I definitely want to give out, you know, these little things that I see that I feel like could be improved on, right? I feel like it would be a disservice not to give those. And here we are. Here we are in the foreground again. It's kind of, again, kind of hard to really tell that transition just because there's no camera trick that happens here and keep in mind this is like my favorite stage I love the way this works and we can see we've got a guy here who's kind of getting bullied I mean he's got kind of a crude style to it too like the the drawings are crude the uh, the character models are a little crude but they they work for the game 
And this stage again kind of shows off there's like little hidden areas, places you can go up and down, and this is how you resolve some of the conflicts. Like there I just blew off that manhole, which scares them off. And then the gentleman just kind of saunters off like nothing happened. So, I mean, we'll just not... We'll, we won't think too deeply into that. But we'll continue to move forward here. And, and hopefully you'll see, again, the tricks of perspective that really impress me with this game. And I would love to see more from this studio. Uh, I would love to see what they're able to come up with. I feel like they could definitely benefit from... How do I put it? See another secret area here. I think their hearts are in the right place. I think a little maybe experience, maybe more budget would eventually uh, lead them to making some really great things. And that's not to... And, and if the developers are watching, I don't want this to be like... I don't want that to be an insult. I want that to be, you know, this is this is good. This is This is good and I really want to see where this leads you. Uh, I know they've been... Actually, I should go back and look at the wiki page because they have done a couple years of development and as I mentioned, they did win a... Uh, whoops, there's me dying. And again, no real no real failure state to worry about. Everything I did over there on the left is still done. Uh, so I know they've been at this for uh, a few years. Uh, and I really should look into some of the other things they've done to kind of get a gauge on uh, the progress they've made. But I would have to say, as far as creativity is concerned... I'd say they've got a really neat idea here. I feel like, um, oh, there we go. See the guy we, we helped? Now he's being attacked by awkward birds. <laughs> now I've got to help him. In order to help him, we need to come over here. It's not immediately obvious, I don't think. I believe there's a, I've got to do something here. I'm supposed to activate a machine for him. And I don't remember where it is now. So I am kind of rambling, and I do apologize. I kind of wish the live stream wouldn't have, uh, the audio wouldn't have crapped out, because I feel like what I'm mentioning here and what I'm kind of going over right now is kind of a Cliff Notes version of everything I'd really talked about. Um, and it was hard to hear, so I couldn't even really get back and get notes on what I had said originally. Again, I will put a link in the video description, and I want uh, the devs to know. I want to I thank you very much for allowing me to experience this. Uh, for uh, seeing what you've got and I will look out for more in the future because again there's feels like there's definitely something here a creative spark that could definitely and I use spark not as a pun intended because of the main character being a spark but I'm terrible with the jokes what can I say people don't come here for the jokes they come here because I'm terrible I think actually I don't really know there we go. We can see more kind of foreground, background playfulness happening here. And yeah, I, this, if there's more of this in the future where it goes in the background, foreground, and it plays with my perception, then yes, I absolutely would love to play more of this and see what more there is. So there, I think that's good. Uh, I think... I believe I've kind of made the point. Again, it's a cute little game. If you're out there looking, if you like what you see, you're kind of looking for something that's uh, cutesy, can be, um, might not take a long time to absolutely beat. And it's got a, its own little quirky sense of humor, as you can see. Yeah, I, I think some of you might like this. Again, it's uh, very light on the platforming, very light on the, there's really, I call it, a, as I mentioned in the original, kind of a puzzle platformer, but really the puzzling is, well, you're, you're seeing it. It's figuring out what order you're supposed to be activating certain electrical boxes in order to get everything moving. And you don't even always have to do that. That's just if you really want to move the city forward and uh, help everybody's problems. There are some stages where you will have to do that in order to find the um, ending electrical box. I died as I hit that, so that probably is bugging out. Yep, it bugged out just a little bit. Okay, that's that was new. I had never seen that before. All right, so yeah, it's minor technical issues aside, honestly, it's very solid. I haven't had any problems playing it. Haven't had any problems um, 
technically, really. Uh, aside from the maybe the rebinding issue that I mentioned in the beginning, because the uh, re the rebinding application that in the launcher box is uh, not the greatest, I'll be honest. But overall, yeah, awesome game. With a soundtrack that varies, like this uh, this soundtrack here in the stage that we're playing right now is kind of laid back, and as you heard with the tram one, there's a, a little bit of uh, more energetic music out there too. And that one actually had, it had, I didn't get far enough, but it had lyrics, which kind of surprised me. So there you go, that's Turn On. And uh, this has been a bit of a rambling first impressions. It's been a while since I've really sat down and done some kind of... Uh, decent review, I think. If I'm trying to get back into the swing of things as far as getting more content, getting more varied content, and uh, trying to gather my thoughts when I do this. I may have to consider scripting this because honestly, I don't know how I feel about my performance today, but there you go. This is Turn On by Brainy Studio. Brainy, let me say that again. Brainy Studio, because I don't want to mess up the developer's name. Uh, you can find it on Steam. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. The game is currently selling for about $15. Alright, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time.